Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> well, this is, a, this is neat because, I mean, we've known each other for years, but we've never really sat down and had a conversation. We have mutual friends, and we're always in the same place. Yeah. So now we're in the same place on purpose with a big camera over there. Yes. <laughs> um, so why a picnic store? That's what I want to know. That's my burning question. You know, everyone asks me that. Um, well, it started because, um, you know, I'm the youngest of five, and my father raised us, and uh, he worked all the time, so the only time he was available to spend time with, with us would be after church, after driving us to church. He'd, <laughs> you know, go pick up some hamburgers or make some sandwiches or fried chicken and take us to all the parks around town and stuff. And so those are, you know, my fondest memories of my childhood and growing up and spending time with my dad. So, That's sweet. yeah, and also, you know, uh, we grew up around food all the time. He was always cooking and, uh, you know, just the happy times were when we were cooking and eating. So before it was just picnic baskets, but now it's food. And yep. Are you making all this food? Absolutely. Tell me yeah. about the food. Well, uh, you know, just uh, it's southern classic picnic food uh, with the exception of the bon me sandwich, which is the, you know, Vietnamese sandwich. But uh, I mean, I, I love cooking, uh, I love the outdoors, I love conversation, I love people, I love collecting things like picnic baskets and croquet sets and badminton and stuff like that. So. And you're working to make Bambi a new picnic standard. Yeah, <laughs> the, the new American picnic standard. Um, how long have you had the store now? The current one. Well, that's been a, a work in progress. It's been, a, you know, I've had the building for a year, it took me a year to renovate the building and going through the city of Birmingham and the health department. But uh, it's been open uh, six months now. It's actually kind of weird because we opened in the dead of winter, um, December. <laughs> Big picnic. Yeah, December. But it didn't catch on until about March. But it's, it's up and running now, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. What's the biggest surprise so far? The biggest surprise so far in regards to like the picnic business? Yeah. The picnic business is serious business. It's a... <laughs> It's, it's, it's fun, it's a lot of work, it's a great conversation, um, just, it's never ending. It's, you know, always moving. Do you feel good as a South Sider? you feel like a true hey, South Sider now? I feel like I'm being interrogated. Like, <laughs> that, that's what I do, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. Well, okay, answer that one and then, then I'll shut up. Okay, what's the question? About, I want to hear you talk about being a South Sider. Oh, and Having well, a South Side business. Yeah, absolutely. South Side. Well, I'm a, you know, I, I, I've been in Birmingham since 75 and just uh, grew up um, Montclair Road, um, just always been a South Sider and you know everyone in town is great, uh, always hung out at you know all the local bars and restaurants, um, love people, they're just all very relaxed and very free spirited, just kind, compassionate, great people. Good. Yeah, absolutely. What about you? What was your story? Um, well, you know, I should tell you, I tend to interrogate. Brock, yeah. Brock means badger. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I mean. Really? So, yeah, it really does. So all that comes naturally. Everybody in my family is like that. It's sort of a pain. Yeah. Well, are you, uh, do you have any other siblings? Uh, I have three older brothers. They are 12, 10, and 7 years older than me. So I was the youngest and the only girl. Did you get along with them? Oh, man, I love them. Yeah. I tell each of them that. He is my favorite brother. <laughs> so they're always debating who is actually. Right. That's, I used to always ask my dad if Bobby was his favorite. <laughs> and were you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good. Um, my oldest brother is a professional theater actor. So, in town? No, he lives in Houston now and has for a number of years. But when we were kids, it was a big deal to him not to have a southern accent. So, and the rest of us just sort of grew up imitating him, so we only sound Southern if we are very tired or have had too much to drink. Yeah. At that point, it's all drawls and y'alls. Like, when we get together, we can suddenly get very Southern. My brother closest to my age, he, to me, sounds the most Southern. He sounds like a lot of John Carroll Italian Catholic kids. John when Carroll. He, when he gets really... Yeah, <laughs> I'll like John Carroll. He slips into this... Very, what I think of is a very particular John Carroll Southern accent. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to John Carroll? I did. I was in the last class mm -hmm. that was on Highland Avenue. So well, what year was that? Because I graduated in 1990, so I was on Highland Avenue too. 
So I graduated in 95. Mm -hmm. So our freshman year, we were on Highland Avenue. And then we moved, the school moved to Lakeshore. Right. And my class had a very bad attitude about it. Like we felt that we had been robbed of yeah. our South Side experience. And yeah. several of the teachers said that we were like the worst class because we had had this trauma and we like complained about it for the entire time. Yeah. What's so funny is I remember of walking to where my picnic store is now because that convenience store is oh, always sure. in there. Yeah. So after school, uh, from John Carroll would walk to the convenience store and, you know, my store now used to be a laundromat and, uh, you know, during college I went uh, and did laundry at the laundromat. Where did you go? To UAB? UAB. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, so you have a lot of Highland Avenue and Juju. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Interesting. I hadn't thought about that convenience store. Yeah. We only got to walk there for a year, obviously, and I'm still bitter about it. Yeah. At, on Lakeshore, we just had Wildwood. Yeah, totally I, I haven't been to the new Lakeshore school, but my nieces go there, so. But anyway, well, uh, what else is going on? Like, what do you do uh, on the weekends and stuff? I mean, we see each other out everywhere at art openings and, you know, music shows and stuff like that. But, like, I mean, who, who do you hang with? The, well, I hang with all kinds of folks. The last several weekends have been really weird because I have been working the movies at the Alabama Theater, yeah, uh, which has been this really nutty experience. So my great-grandparents, well, my grandparents and my um, great-grandfather owned a drive-in theater in northwest Alabama, cool. and they owned like three single-screen cinemas in a bunch of little towns like Carbon Hill and Winfield and all this. Yeah. So my mother and uncle would always say that when they were growing up, they were movie brats because they would like work the concession and tear tickets. And so I've been doing that all summer, so yeah. it's kind of weird. That's I mean, neat. Oh man, it's awesome. I think also the Alabama Theater is like this amazing equalizer mm -hmm. that I didn't realize uh, until this summer. So about three weeks ago, um, there were, we showed a movie there called Dead in Five Heartbeats. Mm -hmm. That was about the guy who founded the Hells Angels. Mm -hmm. So there was like seven or eight crazy awesome motorcycle gangs in the Alabama theater. There are all these huge burly guys walking around with little boxes of popcorn and I just like, yeah. like 20 pictures that I just call them all like bikers eating popcorn. Um, okay. well, and then like two, then I guess two weeks later we showed The Sound of Music Yeah, and it was a very different crowd but also sort of the same. I don't know, so it was really interesting to see like all these little older people who come tottering in, talking about the Mickey Mouse Club, and then also all these bikers. Right. So it's kind of awesome to see it. Well, listen, uh, well, I've been hearing a lot of good press about how you're raising money f for the Lyric. Oh, so yeah. how's that coming along? Oh, uh, man, it's great. Tom Cosby uh, is my, my partner. Yeah, in, well, I know uh, Mr. Cosby. He is an awesome guy. I've really yeah. learned a lot from him uh, in the past year. And the joke I make all the time is, for the lyric that Tom is in charge of five and six figure asks, and I'm in charge of one to four figure asks. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I love it. I love being there. Yeah. The um, my friend Chip Brantley, who started Disco, like the Desert Islands of yeah. Company. Yeah. He uh, just a few weeks ago went into the lyric for the first time, and he sent me a text message that said, "Honey, the lyric has radicalized me," and I thought that was this great way to put it because I felt. Like, that's exactly what happened to me. The first time I saw that place, right. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that it existed and that hardly anybody knew about it. And so I just sort of started showing up and wouldn't leave. Yeah, that's terrific. Well, where until, are you until, guys? They gave, until they gave me a job, I basically just like would not go away. What, where are you guys in uh, regards to you know, raising money, getting the funds? Um, we have raised, as of last Friday at five, we have raised $4.3 million. Wow. And... What's your goal? Seven mm -hmm. million. So we're... Is there, is there a timeline? We, well, you know, it's always our great hope that, um, we'd have the Lyric open in time for its centennial, mm -hmm. which is January 14th, 2014. At one point, that seemed much farther away yeah. than it seems right now. Yeah. I feel like it's like 15 minutes from now. So we, I don't think we'll make January. I know we won't make January, but the Lyric will be open in 2014. That's terrific. Oh, it's so surprising. This, just two weeks ago, we started construction on the exterior, and I think the construction crew, I think those guys thought that my whole job consisted of like standing in 18th Street and crying, yeah. because all, that's like all I did for about a week, because it was so exciting to actually see it. Yeah. Happening. Well, well I'll, uh, 
I know who to get in touch with uh, on opening day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For yeah, the yeah, hot yeah, ticket, right? You, yeah, or at any, any point before opening day, like, you can come see it now. It's still, I think now is the best time to see it because it's still a mess. It's just oh, yeah. like a huge, beautiful ruin. And soon it's going to be, it, you know, soon it'll be more like Alabama. It won't be nearly so gritty. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think the last time I saw you out was um, at Alice Stevens Center for the Hayse Project, oh, yeah. which was part of the Southern Food Alliance, and uh -huh. it was at Alice Stevens Center. But, uh, but that was, a, uh, you know, like I said, I always see you around town, and uh, we have mutual friends, and, uh, you know, similar, like, a lot of things in common, and, uh, you know, it's just nice to actually get to sit down and have a conversation awesome. with you. The, what was the name of the songwriter at that? Hey, Susan Werner. She bought me three eggplants. Wow. I did not know that she was the person performing. Yeah. Tonight, but I guess during the night market at the Al Stevens, where your lovely picnic shop had a booth. Yeah. Um, she was just walking around talking to people. And I was standing in front of the Jones Valley booth. And she was just this random person said, I'd like to buy you something from here. And I was... And uh, I had actually already bought some produce from those guys, and yeah. she went, well, let me buy you something else. So uh, so she bought me three eggplants, which was awesome, that I actually had on pizza that uh, my husband made just yesterday, two days ago. Yeah, well, it sounds like a... It was know, great. Yeah. I think it's really neat, and it just sounds like you and I, we, uh, we have a lot of like, similar interests, and, you know, like I said, mutual friends, and we surround ourselves with good people. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Way to go, us. Thank you.